Hi, this is Lisa from QuillingPatch.com and I'm going to be making a series of videos that help sort of demystify uh, working with rhinestones and making a rhinestone templ template. And also I hope to make it less intimidating. I know when I first started doing rhinestones I was a bit overwhelmed and it does look overwhelming, but once you get started on it, it's actually pretty easy and very addictive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I opened up my file that I want to use and in this case it's a Crown SVG file that I have up on my website at quillingpatch.com and I'll have the exact link in the description on YouTube if you're looking at YouTube. I've imported it and I'm going to size it. I've already sized this to four inches. That's because I'm putting on a card. If I were to put on a t-shirt I would likely make in the seven to eight inches uh, range. What we're going to be doing, I'm going to do this on a little card. So I've got my sizing. I'm going to zoom it a little bit and you can um, zoom it over here which I don't really like. I'm kind of used to my click and cut way. If by hitting control in the wheel scroll it'll automatically zoom in. That keeps the design in the center which I also really like. So I have my design and now I want to turn it into a rhinestone template. Make the cut has a feature that is uh, fabulous. Makes it very easy uh, where you just sell thing into a template. So I'm going to go select and then and here to rhinestone you can also do control K or in shape magic it's here, down here, and then you'll see also rhinestone down there. All right, so you're going to get a window that opens with a lot of numbers that will look confusing at first, but really they're not. First thing I'm going to start with is stone size. When you order your rhinestones, you'll you'll notice that they're all they have a different sizing, where it's SS6, SS10, SS11, SS16. The most popular size is probably SS10 or SS11, and the other ones, the smaller and the larger, are used mainly for filler. So I'm going to use an SS11 stone, right? And basically what we're doing with the template is we're creating a series of holes for the rhinestones to pop into. And in order for the holes to get in there, the hole has to be a little bit bigger than the rhinestone. Now, I wish Make the Cut would do it, but it doesn't. I wish it was more intuitive where if I went to SS11, it would automatically upsize the hole, and it doesn't do that. So the general guideline is two, to two sizes up. So if I'm an SS11, I would go to SS13. Uh, I have found from my experience that that did not work. It was too small a hole, so I go up to SS14. When you get to a too small a hole, what happens is the rhinestone won't quite fit in, so you're going to have a lot of trouble getting the, the rhinestones to sit nicely, and also a lot of trouble getting the lift when you go to put your transfer, transfer tape over it. Okay, so I've got my SS14. The next thing is decide whether we want to outline or fill shape. So outline will look like that, and I do like the look of that. Fill shapes fills the whole thing in. I don't like the look of that and it was probably required quite a bit of tweaking to make it look nice. One nice feature that Make the Cut has and it does it automatically, if you look up here, it says rhinestone preview count 188 stones. It's telling you how many stones you're likely to use you've got in this project. So 108 stones sounds like uh, a lot but it really isn't. Uh, gross is 144 which usually a gross will probably cost you about two to three dollars. So I'm going to go outline shapes. The next thing I can do is change the spacing. Whoops, change the spacing to find something that I like. Generally speaking, you're not going to go too much over like the three, like in that range. Once you start getting a bit wider, the, the design will start to lose its shape. Let's see what I mean there, right? I don't hear. Still the same. If I go too, too small, I'll make the spacing too, too, too dense. You'll see one thing, the stone count will rise. But you'll also have these little nodes touching each other. And if they touch each other, and I'll show you what I mean when I go to fill shape, what happens is when it goes to cut, they're so close together that the rubber just tends to shred and you've got a mess on your hands. So you've got to make sure you've got just enough space for the rhinestones to sit nicely and, uh, and cut nicely. So I'm going to go back to outline shapes. This button here means if I go uh, and click it, it'll delete that original SVG. So I'll just have the rhinestone uh, holes there. So I'll show you what that looks like gets rid of it. We don't want that. I want that background there so I can use it as a reference point for tweaking. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to cancel, sorry, and go back to where I was. So 14 and I'm going to go to the spacing around. I like it around 0.33 Zero three three ish in that neighborhood. That's not too bad. I like the look of it. There are some a few little things I will change 
down here and down here and some of the circles. And I'll have to do that manually. You can't get around it. You're going to have to do some manual tweaking. No software will make it perfect. So I'm going to accept that. Make sure I haven't missed anything. There we go. <clears throat> and there's our design. So <clears throat> if we were to cut that right now, um, you'd have a little bit of a mess with some of them here not looking, sitting so nicely. First thing I'm going to do to make it easier to work is uh, change the background color. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm dying of this. Uh, I'm going to do to make its own layer. Actually, first I'm going to change its color. I'll change it to uh, a red or a color that's a bit more vibrant. Yeah, we'll do red. Okay. And then I'm going to put it on its own layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I can turn that SVG layer on and off. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go over here, it says hide layer with a little eyeball. Close the eyeball. You see how it disappears? It's still there when I want it, but I'm not going to get accidentally click on it or move it when I'm trying to work with the rhinestones. And I still want to have that shading so I can see the basic shape and outline. So I'm going to shut, shut that off. And now I'm going to have to manually move some of these stones to make it look a little bit um, nicer and a little bit more even. Uh, you won't be able to do that right now. If you, you'll see if you do that, it's going to go all over the place and it's going to group all the stones together. What you do do is go to go down here first, yeah, select all the little rhinestones here, and you want them to become their own, each little hole to become its own separate entity. So I'm going to go down here and find split. And you'll see. So now all those circles are separate and on their own I can move them around and do what I want with them. Okay, so let's find some travel spots. This, this can be the most time-consuming part of doing your rhinestone designs, trying to get it to be just perfect. And it, I may actually end up pausing the video so I can not bore you with the details. But I, I do want to give you an idea of what I'm doing. So down here, right away, I know I don't like it. Uh, actually, I'm going to get rid of it. And just go here. Move that a little thing. I'm going to start by doing the corners. I'll move that. Get rid of that. I move this down to a corner. I'm going to get rid of this one. Go to a corner. And that gives a nice reference point and it gives a clean design thing else that follows. So I'm going to get rid of this one. This is more just a case of eyeballing it. Like that, we'll start moving those over. You see where I'm going with this? I got rid of this. Um, get rid of that one. That one. Don't worry, it'll still come together. <laughs> Makes sense in a bit. And there's that. When you move them over, you have to kind of shift a whole bunch of them over and not just move that one over. You can just make this an error thing. You'll get pretty good at it the more you do it. Maybe that one a little low. Okay, so you see um, where I'm going with this. So I'm going to continue uh, perfecting my little uh, design so I get it just how I like it. I'm going to be moving around uh, a few of these, fixing up in here, and you'll see what it looks like by the time I come back. Hi, I'm back. I maybe took about five minutes to tweaking my design to get it to just right. It might take you a little bit longer the first time where you're getting used to the movement of the, of the stones and figuring out what, the placement. Um, I've been doing it for, for a while, so I'm, I'm, I'm generally pretty good about uh, editing. Okay, so here we have our, our this is actually our finished template that we're going to send to the cutter. Um, I'm going to make sure I save it. Okay, so we'll save. Uh, replace that just to make just in case I, 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 I uh, accidentally erase it which has never happened you can see I've made some adjustments I didn't really like the rhinestones going all the way around here so I kind of tweaked it to make it more in line with the line here okay so we're gonna send it to the cutter and what we'll do is we'll cut the project if you're gonna cut with a click and cut 
um, a click and cut element or groovy or max, then you need to change your settings a little bit um, into your blade offset. Should be around, uh, I would say 60, like usually you double it depending on, um, usually double what they suggest for vinyl. So check your software program and your machine, what they suggest for vinyl. The offset should, for, should be here about 50, about 50 for, uh, for a K and K. So I would change it to 50. Uh, let's see everything. The knife point, that's fine. Speed, hang on. Uh, speed for this should be around 75. Sorry, 75 for the force and 150 for the speed. That's on the slow side, but I like it slow. Hang on, 150. And then this is really important, the multi-cut. You need to do two passes, so I would put this to two passes. And I would hit start and send it to the machine. If you're doing um, a zing, and more than likely you are using a zing, uh, you go in here, you change your blade offset to... First off, I should mention, you should always be using your thick blade on these machines. Whatever machine you're using, a Cameo, a Black Cat, a Zing, a Can-K, you use your, your, your thick materials blade. So we're going to go up here to 75. So we're going to get my little grip here. Oh, <laughs> making it look so easy. I, I really don't like these knobs. <laughs> yeah. That is very counterintuitive, this software. So uh, around 75, I'm just going to do 74, I'm cheating. No, the, four, sorry, you, the offset should be around 75. The speed should be at, uh, I would say, 10. We're good on 10. And, well, 10. And the force at about 85, which is already at. So, and again, the multi-cut. We'll go here to multi-cut, and we'll change it to 2 and then you're ready to uh, send to the cutter. Okay, click that. Okay, that's the end of this section of the video. The next one is going to be preparing to cut and uh, getting your, your rubber motif onto your mat and cutting in your machines. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.